Well, hello, my wine-loving friends. It is a most wet and rainy day in Napa Valley, but it did not deter, deter a few of you from coming in and drinking some badass bottles of wine here at Press tonight. Uh, the coolest of which had to have been the 77 Mondavi Reserve. No, not 77, 75. <laughs> we talked about 77. Um, these wines changed my life, and I will start by saying um, this was the kind of bottle that really drove me to start this sort of series that I do here, which is dregs. I take bottles from the end of the night, and we generally retaste the dregs, of, which is the end of the bottle. Um, this particular wine uh, was left to me by an awesome guy. He's a local here. He owns a winery called Dakota Shy. Shout out to those guys because they are awesome and they are brand new in Santa Lena and kicking ass to take names. Um, he enjoyed this beautiful bottle of 75 Mondavi Reserve tonight, um, and it was amazing. And we're gonna dig into it because this is really the kind of wine that can be pretty life-changing. Um, like I said, we call it dregs because it's the end of the bottle, so there's gonna be a little bit of sediment in here. It's not gonna be totally clean, but we work through it because it's awesome and delicious. Um, 75 Mandavi Reserve, let's talk about this wine. Mandavi was really the father of Napa Valley. He was the reason that um, that, he, that Napa Valley became what it is today. He was the one that was championing, championing the region to other people, to other regions, and really was the one that kind of got everyone together to, to join forces and make the best wines possible in Napa Valley. And that was Robert Mondavi. And of course, now today, you know, a lot of people see Robert Mondavi as a little bit more corporately structured, wine distribution, but, uh, and, and there's still a ton of quality associated with those wines. But back in the 60s and 70s, this was, um, just some of the most incredible winemaking that was happening in Napa Valley. Um, Mondavi was a disciple of Andrei Chelichev, who was a, really the father of modern winemaking in California. Um, and in 1975, uh, this vintage drinks very stern. It is a vintage that uh, was fresh off of a super hot vintage in 1974. Um, always has a lot of power, intensity, and structure to it. Uh, not a super hot vintage, not a, a cold vintage by any standard, just a really wonderful powerhouse vintage. I think that would be comparable to something like 2015 now. Uh, a drought year, uh, a year that um, produce some pretty stellar wines. So let's get into it, shall we? Holy moly. There is so much fruit on these wines. I cannot tell you how blown away I was by these wines when I first got here and I started digging into the 60s and 70s Napa Valley wines. And this was one of the bottles that just blew my mind. I, I remember the 78 distinctly, uh, 78 Mondavi Reserve still to this day is a life-changing wine. Uh, 75, no different. Such a power, power vintage. When you're, when you're smelling old wines, you're really looking for quality of fruit. You're looking for some of those savory, some of those tertiary, secondary things that are happening in the wine. And though you get a ton of fruit, there's also a ton of herbaceousness. And Cabernet Sauvignon naturally lends itself to having a ton of herbaceousness. It's a very herbaceous grape. But those qualities often won't come out for many, many years because it's a little bit clouded by the the ripe fruit that exists in a young young wine now it you know i, I can't even do math right now but um this many this many years on the wine it's going to start showing some of those really cool herbaceous characters and that's what i'm getting in spades on this wine but there is a ton of dried leather um dried fruit dried herbs very it's a very dried smelling wine but you can smell the intensity and the focus. It's not a it's not a bready wine. There's no there's not a ton of funk on it, but it it does have like a it does have that old world charm. Mm. It's incredible. This wine has such life and such vibrance and freshness, uh, intensity of fruit. Um, gosh, you can still taste it. This has been open for hours now and it's still an incredible vibrant vibrant wine mm. tons of dried cherry tons of leather that really like nice leather um dried spices a little bit of like black pepper 
it's a it's got a little bit of a spiciness to it which I really really enjoy and like I said the, the 75 with it being such a powerhouse vintage it does have incredible depth and focus and intensity and I actually took this bottle over to some guests tonight and I had a little bit left over um, and just pour them a little sip and I said try this because I know that they love Bordeaux and they love the great wines of the world and I know that they haven't had a bottle like this and I said tell me what you think what does this taste like to you and the first thing he said was it tastes like Bordeaux and it does I mean there is a very Bordelais character to this wine it is like drinking great burgundy with the intensity on the palate it's not a it's not a full-bodied wine, though there is a ton of richness and a ton of viscosity. It's not a full-bodied wine. It doesn't feel like the young Cabernets that we're making today. And stylistically, you know, the wines were much different back then than they are today. And I think that's it's worth noting that the alcohol in this is probably only about 12.5%. This label is super destroyed, so it's kind of hard to see it. Um, but I'd be willing... Oh, 11% alcohol by volume. I don't even know if you'd be able to see that there, but 11% alcohol, crazy as that. Um, more than likely what happened was there was probably some watering back that happened, which uh, literally is an addition of water, so you don't get as high alcohol. Um, I suspect there was maybe a little of that here, though I, I don't get super, super, super ripe fruit. I get like ripe, ripe even keeled fruit. The tannins are incredibly well integrated, but they're still there and there's still great acid. There's still great structure. Um, it's really round on the palate. It's really viscous. It's really, uh, it's really deep. There's so much fruit here, but this, this has started to dive more into those secondary tertiary characteristics. I think if you had never had an old bottle of Napa Valley wine before and you started with this, you would be a convert immediately. Um, this was unfortunately our very last bottle and this, um, was very sentimental. This actually came from our uh, former owner, Leslie Rudd. It came personally from his personal cellar um, and came to us and we got to enjoy it tonight with, uh, with Todd and um, it was just a wonderful evening. So uh, I'll leave you with that. I will leave you with uh, the notion that Napa Valley can and does age. The 75 Mondavi is a perfect example of that and we are super, super proud to be doing the kinds of things that we are doing every night at press, which includes serving wines like this and changing people's minds and having a lot of fun while doing it. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this dregs video where I may have seemed a little crazy and tired and delusional because I am, but I love doing it. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I hope you have a good night. Bye.